started singing that song, it made me smile. Because I know that I have. And I do. I look for the light all the time. When I come to church, I'm looking for the light. Oh, Hallelujah. Lord. When I open the Bible, I'm looking for the light. Yeah. Glory to God. Oh, Hallelujah. Lord. When I see you, when I talk to you, I'm looking for the light. Oh, Glory to God. Lord. I'm looking for the light to be shed on my yeah, yeah. heart in my life. I know. Hallelujah. The light is real. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah. He's a wonderful light. He said, I am the light of the world. Hallelujah. So tonight we're going to worship Jesus and we're going to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Brother Liming is going to preach for us tonight. So glad he came from Ohio, right? Ohio. Ohio. Beautiful Ohio. <laughs> I have a friend that's what he, he calls it. Beautiful Ohio. Is that what you think about it? No. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> He thinks Florida is beautiful, yeah. don't you? <laughs> beautiful Florida. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, I think it is too. Yeah. I think Florida is beautiful. But to, right now, it's not too much because it hasn't been raining. It's all crunchy out there if you walk across the grass. <laughs> so, it gets prettier when it's raining. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to yes. um, receive our prayer request right now. Has anybody got a prayer request? Sister Linda. Yes. Sister Linda. Um, taught the angel on the way to church her and and they I asked her I said do y'all have any prayer requests and she said that her and Jason um, are wanting the Lord to lead them they are wanting to start some kind of a ministry wow uh, helping the homeless supplying food Okay, somebody else got a prayer right. request. Ellie, remember Ellie and, and their and all of that about the wreck. Anybody else tonight? Sister Cherie asked if I could stand in for her. She's still running over 104 temperature oh, yeah. in days. Mm -hmm. And uh, her chest is hurt. She has COVID. She's in Augusta. And uh, just pray that the Lord would move it off of her. She had it for three or four months the first time. So please pray that the Lord will heal her tonight. <coughs> Anything else? Oh, uh, remember Sister Tammy. Yes, remember her. She's working and she's watching though. He says, Sister Tammy, be glad you're with us. Um, I remember Paul still that had surgery. Pray that God was helping him to recover. Remember uh, Sister Vicky's husband that had surgery. Remember Brother Stephen. Sister Rita's going to head home tomorrow. Uh, he, he is on his truck right now. He got out of the hospital and he's driving his truck onto the destination of the load. So please pray. He's got, I mean, it's, it's, he really isn't able. But his daddy is driving with him, so at least he's not by himself. But y'all pray that God would let his will be done, Brother Stephen. Help Brother Stephen to victory in Jesus no matter what. And um, pray for Sister Rita. She's gonna be. She is by herself. She's probably watching us too. Pray for her that God will watch over her tonight. She's by herself in a motel. She's gonna catch a plane tomorrow. So remember her and her family. Um. Somebody else? Anybody else? Oh, there you are, Brother Jose. I didn't know you were gonna be here. Yes, ma'am. I'm glad you are. Go ahead. Sister Linda. Also, let's pray for all the prayer requests that come up on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I was reading some of them. Mm -hmm. And let's see if we, I mean, I don't 
can't remember all of them. Yeah, but you pray, with, pray yeah. for them while you, when you saw them. Right. That's what I do. I look at them and I pray for them. One was a baby that's been on a feeding right. tube, if y'all remember that baby. And for a long time, the baby Living has been. Months, yeah. Please remember that. Yeah. And some uh, a lady's eyes, uh, Doris LaForce, I think, her eyes. You, you I just follow up there. Anybody else? Thank you, Lord. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'd like for y'all to remember my friend John. I would like for you to remember my friend uh, Paula. And I would like for you to remember everybody on the Facebook that that uh, are hungry for the Lord, that he would intervene, he would reach out to them, and they would feel the power and spirit of the Lord, helping them to find that place in him that He's got for them. I mean, I think, I don't believe people watch us that's not hungry in some way. Right. <laughs> don't you? Yeah. I think they've got to be hungry for something, especially the movement of the Spirit of the Lord. Right. Oh, glory to God. If you're watching for that, that's what God wants to do for you. Amen. Hallelujah. You just have to be willing to open your heart to it and, and believe that He's moving on you. Glory to right. God. He will. Yeah. Hallelujah. And sometimes He will when you're not expecting it. Just like right now. Whoa. I wasn't expecting him to reach down like this, but he wants you to know, hallelujah, that it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. He'll give you that spirit and power. He'll help you, Lord. Oh, he'll help you to know that he's moving on you again. Some of you have been on fire for God in the past, but you don't have it anymore. But I'm going to tell you something. God's not willing for you to not have it anymore. He wants you to have it. Hallelujah. He wants you to be on fire for God. He wants you to receive from Him. Glory to God He does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Keep looking for Him. He said, Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Oh, hallelujah. Ask and ye shall receive. He didn't want you to think it's impossible or too far away or you left it too far back. No, it's not that way. It's not that way at all. Oh, glory to God. Yeah. Just check, tell Him you're grateful for what you've already had, but you want something more from Him. And oh, right. that, that day, that day, when God begins to bless you again, and He will. Yeah. Oh, he will. he will. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Anybody else he got will. another request? Let's pray for everybody that's hungry for God. Hallelujah. How about you, Brother Stack? Is your daddy good? Doing good? And you? <laughs> you tell him I said, hey, I, I really love y'all. And let's pray for them. Hallelujah, Brother Stag. His boy. Uh, wait a minute. Buford. Buford. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I, I, I'm telling you, this morning I forgot Brooklyn's name. <laughs> she was a baby in our church for all that time. Oh, oh, don't look at me like that, lady. <laughs> I'm getting dementia. <laughs> I'm not getting dementia. <laughs> no, it's after COVID. No, oh, I okay. Like oh, that it's that all. brain fog, isn't it? At at all. All. It's that brain fog. Goodness. I'm telling you. But I do uh, welcome you for and uh, wish his daddy was here too. Glory to God. Does he watch us? Does he ever watch us? Okay. Tell him we want him to. That we like it. Michael, call me in every now and then. Praise the Lord. Anybody else tonight? Okay, let's go to prayer. Believe in the Lord.
just how good he is. And sometimes you just don't, you just don't have words to really ex like explain how, you know, how good God really is. Yeah. And so you try to make up some, you know, oh, yeah. to, you know, kind of get it out. Yeah. And, you know, as we were singing this song, you know, I can make it, you know, and the, um, I think it was the second verse. Let me get back to it. It was talking about the load that I must carry, someday I'll lay down, and I'll never have burdens again. This old cross will then be traded for a robe and a yeah, crown right. when I've entered that land without sin. And, you know, when we think about it, we go our day-to-day -day life and we're carrying things. But there's going to be a time, this is what I'm thinking, there's going to be a time where I don't have to carry anything. Right. And I really don't. I really don't have to carry it now, but it's almost like <laughs> it's human nature. Yes, Sister Amy. It's just, it's, but I have to think that I don't have to, and then there's going to be a, a time where I will never have to again. And so I just, I appreciate the Lord for the reminder yes. that I don't have to carry it now and I'm not going to have to carry it then either and I just pray the Lord just continue just giving me reminders of what he has done and what he's what he's done what he's doing and what he's going to do in my life and I just really appreciate the Lord for the reminders
tonight who like to worship God Amen. in spirit and in truth. Amen. I mean that tonight. I don't mean to sound cliche in any way. But, Amen. The Bible said the hour is coming and now is. Yes. The hour is coming yes, and now head, is. Brother, it is. Amen. From the Woo. time that Jesus was manifested Amen. here on the earth. Yes. Amen. That was the time for people to worship God in spirit and Amen. in truth. Amen. We can, we can, we can, though we can let our interfering hands reach into a service and dictate it on how it should go. Amen. But I'll tell you what, when the Holy Ghost is ordering the service, yes, Amen, it won't be out of order. No. Right. Amen. I know the Bible says to let everything be done in what? Decency, Decency and in an order. Amen. amen. And when the Holy Ghost, Amen, is taking hold of the steering wheel, Woo! Amen. You know what's going to happen? People will get into that realm where God can bless them, where God can move yes. and lift them up. Amen. Yes. Maybe in a moment of trial that they're in, in a season, amen, of, you know, of temptation, the Lord can come by. Right. Yes. And He can help pull you through yes. and help Lord, you to carry God. that load amen. until amen. He sees fit to lift it. Amen. Lord, amen. Lord. I'll tell you, it is good Lord. to be here tonight. Thank you, Holy I told Lord. Sister Greer, I said, well, I said, you know us, we're Kentucky style, amen. We lived in Kentucky for a long time. My wife's from Kentucky and, you know, well, they have their, they have their struggles too in their churches. 
Amen. But it don't matter if you're in Kentucky or wherever you're at in the world. If you're a child of God and you've got the Holy Ghost of God dwelling on the inside of you, you can worship the Amen. Lord. In the presence of a bunch of devils, you can still worship yes, God amen. and still have the victory. Yes, and the Bible said that this is the victory that overcometh the world, amen. even our faith. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. amen. We are serving a big God tonight. Yes. Amen. To I remember A. Allen used to say, think big and believe big. Yes. Amen. And out of it will come big things. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Let's just stretch our hands one more time. Yes, glory. I tell you, I don't think we've held our hands up Hallelujah. enough tonight. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Yes, all right. Praise the Lord tonight. Thank just you, raise. Jesus. You know what? Let's all just stand one more time. Oh, glory. Amen. I'm Hallelujah. not trying to get you to exercise any kind of bodily Praise movement. Praise God. Go ahead. But I'll tell you what, tonight, let God work yes, through you tonight. Yes, glory. Hallelujah. Let God work through your body. Let God yes. take Amen. A dance in your feet tonight. Whoa. Amen. There's some of you, I believe you felt like lifting a hand. Amen. Well, right now might be your moment. Amen. Yes, to Jesus. lift your hands. Amen. Yes, and let the Holy Lord. Ghost Amen. just break up on you tonight. Glory. Amen. And would cause you to walk out of here with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. That's what the church needs more now than Amen. ever is a joyful encounter with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And it, 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 can, it can start from you tonight. It can stem out of me tonight, friend. Amen. God has no respecter of persons. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I don't like all these preachers that will tell you to get in and they just stand there deader than a, a corpse in the casket. Amen. 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 I believe we ought to lead the way in the world. Go ahead, brother. I said the preachers ought to lead the way yes, in worship. Right. We ought to lead the people into that Hallelujah. realm, amen, where God can pass by yes. on their behalf, amen, oh, and do right. great and mighty things that we oh. know not. Amen. amen. Oh, right. Hallelujah. Aren't you Thank glad you tonight that he knows how to trouble the water? Yes. Oh, amen. And the good thing about this salvation experience is we don't have to wait once in a season no. for the angel to come down and no. trouble the water. No. But you know what the Bible says? Hallelujah. It says, amen, that, that everything that hath breath, the praise ye yeah. the Lord. Yeah. And that God inhabits the praises yes. of his people. Friend, if we'll get into that realm of praise, praise he'll God. trouble the spiritual waters. Oh, amen. Help can be available. Amen. Glory Do we not God. need help tonight? Yes, amen. We amen. Can. We've been through a great pandemic like we've never seen in our time period. Right. They've seen a, a pandemic, you know, at the turn of the century, but we've not seen none in our generation like we're seeing it now. Amen. Amen. And I want to tell you what, if we're ever going to get in tonight and, and grab a hold of God, we can't wait till the next revival. No, you can't wait for it to happen at the next youth camp. No. It don't start tonight, friend. Amen. Amen. It'll never get started. No. Right. Go ahead. Yeah, right. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what. My God tonight and your God too can do exceedingly abundantly above all that which we ask or think. How many believes that tonight? Yes, it's true. Amen. Glory to God. It don't matter how corrupt our government gets, and whether it's a Democrat or a Republican, it don't matter tonight. Our God can still do great things he tonight. Can. We Amen. can still prove great exploits yes. as long as we got God on our side. Yes, as long as that outstretched hand of God is reaching down tonight, God is capable tonight of going beyond our imagination. Yes, glory to God. If we can Amen. believe Him for it tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We need Good encourage Lord. tonight, church. Yeah. Amen. Do it. Oh, Amen. Up Lord. Jesus. You know, through the pandemic, I realize we got to use wisdom, but friend, the Bible tells us that we're not to forsake ourselves in the assembly of the saints. Amen. Amen. As we see that day approaching, but as the manner of some men have. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Keep on coming. Are we not living in a time now where people are finding excuses and reasons? Not to come to church. Amen. Amen. They say, well, people's quit wearing their masks, so I'm afraid I'm going to catch something. Hallelujah. Well, you know what? You go to the restroom at these public 
buildings you walk into, you can catch something right there. You can take a disease home with you right there from a public place, whether it be a grocery store or wherever. So I want to tell you what tonight, church, it's time that we quit making up excuses. And it's time that people start being faithful to their God again. Because the Bible said, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. When people miss church, they'll still go to work the next day. Is that not true? Amen. Well, I don't want to offend nobody tonight out there, but it's true tonight. Come on, brother. Amen. How many loves God tonight? Amen. Amen. You can be turning tonight to the book of First Peter. First Peter chapter five tonight, and I know my wife, if it was all possible, she could be here tonight. She would enjoy being right here in this church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what? My wife is one of the very first ones who started sharing your all's singing videos. I believe it. And it got around up in the north. Come on. Thank Amen. You. you know what? Credit to my wife, but yes, all the glory to the Lord. Thank you, sister. Amen. I sure love you. Hallelujah. Good to have Brother Buford. Amen. We have traveled all day to church. We was up in Center Hill this morning, and then here tonight, he told his dad coming back, he said, I'm going to go with Brother Lyman tonight. Oh, praise God. I wasn't going to object to that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But if you have your Bibles, we'll just try to read, amen, in 1 Peter chapter 5 tonight in verse 8. Amen. I feel like the Lord touched me while I was sitting out in the vehicle. Amen. To read from here tonight in 1 Peter chapter 5 in verse 8. Paul here right, or Peter here writes, and he says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists what steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Amen. You can be seated right there. Look here tonight in verses 8 as he begins to expound here in this parable or this epistle. He says, be sober, be vigilant. Now what's he saying here tonight? He's basically telling, amen, the believers to be on guard. To be watchful here. The word vigilant tonight basically would be defined as keeping a careful watch for danger or difficulty. If I had a title tonight for this verse, I'd like to preach to us tonight on survival mode. Survival mode. What does it mean tonight for one to be in survival mode? When, we, when one is in survival mode, they're basically in a live or die predicament. Amen. When one is in survival mode, they'll do their very best to try to stay alive or to survive. Yes. Amen. I believe tonight here in Peter's great wisdom here, he says it right tonight when he tells us to be sober, to be vigilant. And why must we be this way? He said, because your adversary, the devil. Now we all know tonight that word adversary is just a common word tonight. And it basically is meaning our enemy tonight. How many knows tonight the devil is everybody's enemy? Yes. Amen. That's why the Scripture even tells us in the book of uh, Revelations chapter 12 how that he is considered to be the accuser of the brethren. Yeah. Amen. Now the devil is not people's friend like they think he is. You know, you've got all these, what they call them, devil worshipers or, or Satanists, amen. And, you know, they'll get off in a closed room somewhere and, and they go through their rituals and they say that they are worshiping the devil or they're giving honor, amen, to the prince of this world, yeah. thinking that he's some kind of a friend to them. But really, he's not. According to verses 8, he is their adversary. Yes, he is. Amen. And Peter said, we got to be sober. We've got to be vigilant as Christians tonight because our adversary, the devil, and he's compared to a roaring lion right. that walketh about seeking whom he may 
devour. Amen. I believe tonight, saints, with all of my heart tonight, that we have got to stay in survival mode at all times. That's why even the Bible tells us tonight uh, in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 uh, when Paul here was writing to the church at Ephesus and it tells them right, he says to be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Putting on the whole armor of God that we might be able to what? To stand against the wiles of the devil. I want to tell you what tonight, saints, from the very night that Jesus saved you, from the very night that you came up from an altar of repentance, and you feel like you felt like that you got born again. I want to tell you immediately, you started putting on the whole armor of God. And I want to tell you what, from then to this very night, amen, we're required not to take off that armor. Because when we take off the armor of God, we become more vulnerable to the devil. Amen. To attack us and to begin to afflict us and begin to take us away from God. And I want to tell you what tonight, saints, now is not the time to be going away from God. But if anything, we need to draw nigh to God. That God would draw nigh to us. Yes, glory to God. Amen. It is important that every one of us tonight examine ourselves. Amen. Paul even writes to them in the book of Corinthians and he said to let a man examine himself to see whether he be in the faith or not. Every day we got to examine ourselves. And I want to tell you what tonight, friend, if you feel like that you're shortchanging God in your relationship with Him, amen, don't you think it's time to put back on the whole armor of God? Amen, because I want to tell you what, we are no match for the devil. We cannot thwart off the devil's devices on our own capabilities. But Paul told us one thing. Brother, he told us that we're not to be ignorant of the devil's devices. And I want to tell you what tonight, friend, the only way a person will not become ignorant of the devil's devices, amen, is by walking in the Spirit, is by putting on the whole armor of God, by taking the helmet of salvation, by taking the breastplate of faith, by guarding your loins about with the truth. And I want to tell you tonight, friend, amen, the weapons of our warfare tonight are not carnal, but mighty through God. Hey, but I want to tell you tonight, friend, we can stay in survival mode if we want to. Amen. Right, right, right. Glory to God. A person Amen. can stay in survival mode if they really want to. Amen. I'd like to ask us all a question in here tonight. How many in here is a survivalist? You know what a survivalist is? It is one who is in the process of of trying to stay alive despite all the odds that they're against. That's what a survivalist is. Oh, I've, I've read stories. I've heard, you know, you know, how many knows cancer is so prevalent in our world today? Right in America. Amen. I read a report today, even up in the state of Kentucky, and one doctor said that can't that cancer in Kentucky has got the highest ratio of people that are inflicted with cancer and dying from it. But there are those that have, that has cancer, and they'll do everything to try to defeat all the odds that are against them. And I know that there is medical help out there today that one can receive that brings a slow process of healing to their body. But they say that one of the most deadliest cancer amen, illnesses that a person can have or a female is cervical cancer. They say it's pretty much a death sentence. But when one is diagnosed, whether it be cancer or any kind of a physical illness, they try everything to stay alive. They'll seek medical attention. Amen. If one specialist don't, doesn't give them the right report that they want to hear you know what they do? They'll go for a second opinion. How many knows what I'm talking about? Amen. And the reason why is they're trying to stay in survival mode. And I want to tell you what.
what tonight saints don't you think in the same sense spiritually as the children of God we need to do our best to to maintain our relationship with God I'm talking tonight about praying without ceasing I want to tell you tonight friend there is such a great importance tonight in you and I praying Paul tells us in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 how that he were to rejoice evermore and were to pray without ceasing you know why we must pray and praying ain't an option tonight friend but praying is a necessity because when we watch and we pray amen friend I want to tell you what it'll build yourself up on your most holy faith even when you pray in the Holy Ghost yes that's right amen amen Jesus said to watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. He said the flesh is weak. Oh, but the Spirit is indeed willing. Oh, I want to tell you tonight, if there's ever been a time when it seems like that the devil... Amen. I want to tell you tonight, friend, the devil's still going to and fro up and down in the earth. He did it back in Job's time, and he's still going to and fro tonight. How many believes that? Yes, amen. If, if the people of God really believed it, I believe that they would take their walk with God more serious than what they are. Oh, Listen tonight, friend, I'm not mad at nobody. But I'm telling you tonight, friend, if there's ever a time tonight that we're going to have to learn how to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, it's tonight. Amen. If we're not living in such a combative hour where it seems like, amen, that the church is under attack, that the body of Christ is under attack, brother, it's right tonight. Amen. And I just wonder how much more advanced are we going to go into this thing. Amen to where? Amen. Amen that we're going to see people dropping out of the house of God more. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, friend, that's why we've got to get in survival mode. We've got to grab a hold of God tonight with all of our might and not turn loose. Amen. And declare if God be for us, who can be against us? I want to tell you tonight, friend, even the Bible tells us to be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with the good of God that lies within us. Oh, amen. Oh, you know what? It is so important in the midst of good, a good song service like we've had around here tonight. And I mean it tonight. You can't get it any better than the way you all can sing it around here. I said you can't get it any better. Amen. But I want to tell you, friend, not only is there a great need for good anointed singing like we've heard around here tonight, but there's also a great need for good heartfelt worship. I said, I said there's a great need for good heartfelt worship in the time that we're living in. If we ever need an encouragement, friend, we need an encouragement right now. And that only comes through and by in His presence. And the psalmist said, in his presence is fullness of joy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's true. Hey, Amen. You can have joy at any age. It don't matter who you are yes. tonight, friend. God will give you joy yes. when you get to where he's at. He will. Come on. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Amen. That's good. Oh, Hallelujah. Joy. Joy will lift you out of the sea, that, that valley of discouragement. Yes. Be sure. I don't feel like a, a one of us in here tonight are excluded from not being not going through the through discouragement. Go ahead. We all get discouraged every once in yes. a while. Come on. Hey Amen. How many's ever been depressed before? No. I'll admit to you, I've been depressed when things wasn't going my way. Hey, even I've been depressed over situations. But listen, it's one thing to stay depressed. But it's a whole different matter when you let God bring you out of that state oh, of depression. Go ahead. And that state of despair that you're in. Oh, I'm talking tonight, friend, about being in survival mode. Amen. Don't think for a moment. Amen. That if the, amen. That the devil won't attack you. Amen. Because we're reminded in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, how that the devil there in the wilderness, after Jesus himself had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Amen. The devil was on the war path and he went to attack Jesus. Yes, he did. Did he not? He did. He began to 
attacked Jesus with all diverse sorts of temptations. Amen. He began to talk to the Lord. He began to talk to his mind. Amen. Hallelujah. Now listen, I can't explain it any beyond that. But I can tell you tonight, friend, that the devil's raging tonight. And one reason why he's raging is because according to Revelations chapter 12, the Bible said he knows he has but a short time. Amen. I want to tell you tonight, the devil knows one day that he's going to be casted into the lake of fire. He has no chance. He has no hope like me and you have tonight of ever being saved. And I want to tell you tonight, friend, I believe as many souls as the devil can drag to hell with him, he's going to. But I want to tell you tonight, friend, he don't have to drag you or me to hell with him. We don't have to let him. We don't have to just fall away from our own steadfastness. But I want to tell you tonight, friend, we can be a survivalist through the help of the Lord. And we'll pray always with all prayer and supplication and watching there too with all perseverance. I want to tell you tonight, friend, God can help help us tonight to be made overcomers through and by the blood of the Lamb and through and by the words of our testimony. Say, I'm an overcomer tonight. I'm an overcomer! Raise your hand and say, Lord, in you is help tonight. You is help tonight. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you for your help. Amen. I'm talking tonight, amen, about being in survival mode. Oh, did not Jesus, did not Jesus remind Peter in the book of St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, in verses 31, Jesus told Peter, he said, Simon, Simon, he said, Behold, for Satan hath desired to have thee, that he might sift thee as we. Yes, he said it. Oh, Bye. amen. But he said, I pray for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. Oh, hey, when you say preacher, you say sister or brother, you don't know what I've been going through lately. Oh, yeah, I do. I've been there a time or two myself. You don't know how ensembled in my marriage is. You don't know what it's like at the home life. Amen. You don't know all the trouble that my children's given me. You don't know how it is in my place of work. Amen. Because of a Christian, I'm being persecuted all the time. I want to tell you what, friend. I may not have been there and done that, but I'm telling you what. Amen. I want to tell you tonight, friend. And I know you can say the same thing through and by your past trials and difficulties you've been through. But you did one thing. You stood up on the promises of God. You stood up on the Word of God. And because we chose to stand and believe what they say of the Lord. Amen. God brought us through. Amen. And that's why we're here tonight. And we can tell about it. And we can testify. Amen. About the goodness of God. Woo! Making us. Amen. To be in survival mode. Yes. Glory to God. Somebody said, I'm about to backslide. Well, that's your own fault if you are because you don't have to. No. No. How many knows tonight a person does not have to make shipwreck of their faith? No. Oh. You might be a teenager, but I want to tell you what tonight, if you'll be faithful to the house of God, oh, if every time the choir director says, come on up here and sing, you know what you need to do? You need to be the first one to run up. Amen. And not just sit back. Amen. In your seat. Amen. I think sometimes these pews look like the lazy chair we got at home in the corner. Amen. You know what? When, I, when we come into these gates, when we come into these, His gates, we ought to come in with thanksgiving. The Bible said when we enter into His courts, let us enter into His courts with praise. I want to tell you what tonight, friend, there's no time for sleeping on the job. But when we come into the church door, we ought to come in as lively stones. We ought to come in singing the praises unto yeah. God and declaring that there's victory in Jesus. Yeah. I know there's victory in the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. There's no victory in all 
these prescription pills that people's having to take just to keep their mind together. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you what, how many knows there's practitioners that are out there and they don't mind prescribing you some of these high-powered pills, oh, yeah. Xanax and Valiums, just to help you sleep better at night time. Hey, Amen. You know the best thing to get you a good night's rest is to do if you're a Christian before you go to sleep. Get down, amen, on your prayer bench. Get down on your altar and call out to the Lord yes. and say, Lord, help me. The last few nights I haven't been able to get a good night's rest, and I can assure you, hey, Amen. If you'll call out to God from the sincerity of your heart from the depths of your soul you'll be able to lay on your mattress and sleep like a baby and the very God of peace shall bruise Satan under your and mine's feet shortly I want to tell you tonight friend I want to be a survivalist and I want to help you to be one too Amen. 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 glory to God hallelujah thank you Jesus well we're not I'm not the best preacher and we're not in this for competition no but we're in this to try to encourage one another Amen. in the Lord. Amen. Amen. How many knows that's what David had to... Re many times, David had to encourage himself in the yes, Lord. Did. did he not? Amen. Oh, he had to at different times. Amen. Did you know the Bible even tells us about David? Amen. In 1 Samuel chapter 18, you all know the story that on two different attempts that King Saul attempted to try to kill David with a spear. Yeah. Two different times Saul tried to smoke David to the wall with the jab. Oh, that's why every time David was in the presence of Saul, he had to keep a watch on him. Amen. He couldn't turn his back to him. Amen. He couldn't take his eyes off of him. Amen. And I want to tell you what tonight, church, how many knows in the same sense? That's the way it is in this world that we live in. You know when the, your greatest battle is going to be is when you walk out these doors and you're all alone. You see, when we come together, there's encouragement. When we come together like we are here tonight, yes. just like David said in Psalms 100. 33, he said, Behold, he said, How good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Yes, right. it is. There's something about coming together as Christians. When we come together in one mind, we're in one accord, we're in one place. Amen. And the Spirit of the Lord prompted me, and I, I looked at Sister Gru, I said, Let's just go back and pray for her. Amen. 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 I don't know why the Lord prompted me to go back there and pray with her. But we started laying hands on her. And it wasn't long that the Spirit of the Lord came all yes, over her. Like that. Oh, and I don't know what she got when, she, when the Spirit put her down there in that chair. But I'll tell you what, it looked like she was getting a blessing from on high. Oh, Amen. Amen. I want to tell you what that blessing's going to do. It's going to help her to face tomorrow's yes. trial. It's going to help her throughout the week. It'll give her a reminder. Amen. When she's going through stuffing, through stormy weather of what God did for at Woo! church Sunday it's night. It's the truth, brother. Right. Yes. It's the truth. Amen. And then I said, let's just pray for Anetta there. Oh, and then we went over there and laid hands on Buford. Amen. And I couldn't help but grab your hand, Buford, and raise it up. Yes, hey, I want to tell you what the Bible tells us. That we're, we're to lift up those feeble hands yes. and hang down. Amen. Amen. You know what our problem is tonight, friend? That too many times, too often, that we keep our hands down in defeat. But you know what Hallelujah. the referee does? He'll raise the hands as a sign of victory. Amen. And he knows tonight there is victory of it. Yes, Jesus. Glory to God for that victory. Thank you, Jesus. I said there is help tonight in the Lord. Oh, amen. But I wonder tonight, amen, I don't know how much longer I'm going to hold here tonight. I'm just trying to mind the Lord. Well, hey, amen. Do it. Do it. But listen tonight, friend. Amen. Paul writes to Timothy here in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verses 1. And he says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Woo! Glory! Woo! Be Amen. strong in the grace that yes. is in Christ Jesus. Go ahead, brother. That's good. Amen. 
How many feels like you're weak in your faith tonight? How many feels like you're weak in your walk with the Lord? Don't be ashamed to raise your hand. If you feel that way tonight, son, that's the best thing you can do is just admit tonight your weakness. And you know what we're going to do here in a moment? We're going to lay hands on you. Yes, I know the Bible says to lay suddenly on no man. To lay, lay, lay on no man. No, lay, su lay your hands not suddenly on any person. But I'm telling you what, friend, when God prompts you to pray for somebody, you better obey God. I said you better do it. Amen. Because I believe, amen, that God is up to something. I said I believe that God is up to something. Something that God is going to help somebody around Go here ahead. to be a survivalist. Hey, when you say it ain't my child that's going to quit next, oh, you better not say that because it might be. I said, your very, your very child, your very spouse, the very one that you thought was strong, amen, might be the very one, amen, that'll walk out the doors next. Oh, my. Help us, Jesus. If they're not in survival mode, right. they will. But if you get a determination that you're in this not to quit, amen, how many's in this not to quit? Yes, I said, I didn't get in this to quit. That's why we're not quitters tonight. We're not in this to quit, but we're in this to finish. Yes. Hallelujah. That's why Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I've kept the faith. Yes. He was a survivalist. He endured until the very end. And that's what Jesus said we got to do. We got to endure until the very end, and the same shall be saved. He that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. Oh, yes, Lord, to God. Soon by the help of the Lord, we can endure until the end. Amen. It don't matter tonight. The government might make it, they might mandate it that you can't go into a place of business except you got the vaccine. Amen. If you got the vaccine tonight, that's your business. I'm not up here telling you to get it or not to get it. But I'm telling you tonight, friend, you know where our faith needs to stand. Not in the wisdom of man, but our faith must, and it better be in the power of God. Amen. That's why Paul said, when I came to you in weakness, he said, where my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but it was in the power and the demonstration of the Spirit of God that our faith might not stand in the wisdom of man. But in the power of God, that's who we're going to have to learn how to trust in these last days. We're going to have to learn how to trust in the Lord. We're going to have to learn how to trust in His power. Yes. That's how many knows that God can see us through any problem? Oh, yes, yes right. He can. Yes, He can. He does. He does. I don't want to rehash up anything of the past, but when Brother Michael passed away, Come on. that was a hard time, wasn't it? That was a time of grief. Yes. A time of sorrowfulness. Come on. And I know because I worked in the funeral business for several years. I've been right there. I've seen families grieve over loved ones. I've been right there as an employee in a funeral home. As a professional, I had to just stand back. And, you know, there's nothing you can do. You have to keep your composure and look like a professional. <coughs> Amen. But I know it was a tough time for this church right here. But listen, with the help of the Lord, how many knows you're going to make it? I said, with the help of the Lord, with God's stamp of approval right here Woo! on this little congregation, Come on. this church is going to carry on Woo, we are. for the glory of God. Yes, we are. Hallelujah. How many knows that we listen to those whispers of Satan? Did you know what tonight, friend, I read a book one time on Satan's whispers. Did you know that's what the devil does, friend? That's why the Bible says he's the prince of the power of the air. Amen. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're not, amen, in a literal sense, sisters and brothers, we're not fighting against one another. We're not fighting amongst each other. Even though that's what the devil tries to do, he tries to bring confusion among the body of believers. But Paul said we're wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Amen. Against the rulers of darkness. Against what? Spiritual wickedness, Spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. Oh, if we listen to the devil, if we listen to his whispers tonight, he'll convince us of things that ain't even true. Right. Come on. It's That's true. The truth. Has he ever tried to convince you before? Yeah. One night I was preaching years ago up in Indiana. I thought, I, you know, just in myself, I thought, well, I'm preaching all right, I guess. 
Amen. And this preacher's, this, I'm not, not no reflection of anybody, but this preacher's wife was sitting right about there. And it looked like that she was being contrary to everything I was preaching. And the devil was provoking me to go say something to her after I got done preaching. Amen. You say, is that possible? The devil provoked David to number Israel. Come on. And he let, son, he let, the, he let Satan put it in his heart. And he went out and he numbered Israel. Oh, the devil provoked me. And when I got done preaching, I opened the altar up. You know what I did? I went straight to her and I asked her, I said, was everything okay when I was preaching? Did I preach all right? She said, I think you preached wonderful. And I, I said it in just a tone that I shouldn't have. And when I left, I felt like a fool. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to just immediately leave the building. I wanted to crawl out. I wanted to avoid her. Amen. Oh, Come on, amen. How many know that's the way the devil works? Yes, it is. He'll whisper in your ears, friend. Amen. But I'm telling you what, if you're a survivalist tonight, amen, the Bible talks about us having the mind of Christ. Amen. How many wants to have the mind of yes, Christ? Amen. That's why we got to take the helmet of salvation. Amen. That we can submit ourselves to God and resist all those thoughts that the devil's putting there. When the devil tells you that God ain't able to heal, you tell the devil he's a liar and the father of it. I said, when the devil tells you you can't make it, you tell him I can't make it. You tell him I've come this far. Amen. I've made it this far. And I'm still going to make it all the way home. Oh, yes. Yes. How many's determined you're going to make it all the way home? Yes. Amen. Yes. We're going to make yes. it till we cross the finish line. Yes. Yes. We are. We are. Some of you, you've done listen to the devil long ago, and he's already told you, you ain't got the Holy Ghost yet. You ain't never going to get it. Oh, my. That ain't the truth. Paul said that we're not to be ignorant of his devices. That's the way the devil works. That's the way he operates. And listen, you probably won't get it if you ain't in your prayer closet seeking for it. Amen. But if you'll get in the prayer closet and humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, he, he, the Bible said that God would exalt us in due time. Amen. amen. I want to tell you what, after I got saved, amen, Sister Lee, amen, I started seeking a deeper walk with God. Yeah. I started wanting more. Yeah. I was dissatisfied. Amen. I was just getting saved. I seen what my brother had. I seen what some of those elders had. I seen the relationship. I seen the shout. I seen the way that men and women spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance and something on the inside of me was bubbling over and I said, I've got to have it. Yes. How many knows we ought to have it tonight? Yes, yes. Why do we got to have it? Because Jesus said, ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Yes. If there's ever a time that the church needs power, we need power to stand, amen, against the devil. Amen. Come on. Praise if God. there's ever a time that we need to preach with power yes, glory to and God. be effective when we preach, Amen. it's now. Yes. If yep. you want to stand on that street corner and preach, yep. you better make sure you're full of the power of God. Yes. Come on. Yep. When you get up here to teach and expound these scriptures, make sure you're full of the power of God. Yes. Come on. Amen. I don't know how pastors can pastor churches and not be full of the Holy Ghost. Right. I know pastors have got the Holy Ghost in their wives that don't. Yeah. They quit seeking long ago because they didn't get it when they wanted God to give it to them. Ahead, but if we ain't doing our homework, don't expect that God for God to work on your behalf. How many knows you got to do your homework if you want to learn something? Yes. Hey, man, when I was in school and I hated school, and I don't mind to tell you, I dropped out, brother, and then went back and got my GED. Hey, man, if I ever wanted to become something, if you know what? Hey, man, I always wanted to be a mortician. Hey, man, I always wanted to work in a funeral home, and I realized, hey, man, in order to go get a good education, hey, man, you, you know, you have to have some kind of a diploma or some kind of a GED to prove that you completed 12 years. Amen. But friend, I remember the different times my teacher would send me home and they would tell me, Amen, there's going to be a test this Friday. How many remembers those days when the teacher would say, there's going to be a test coming up? You better go home and study. Do your homework. Get prepared. That's right. Get prepared. Right. Amen. Friend, if you want the Holy Ghost, I wonder, 
Are you doing your homework? Hey, man, are you going home and getting in your prayer closet? On, are you fasting and praying? Are you washing your face? Are you anointing your head with oil? Are you getting in that secret place of prayer like the Bible instructs us to do? I want to tell you tonight, friend, if we're doing these things and waiting on the Lord, amen, I believe the promises of God are yea and amen. They are. Tonight, you're, you're, you're fit for survival mode. Amen. If you're doing, amen, everything that Jesus commissioned you to do. Right. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Some people say it's not a necessity to be filled with the Holy Ghost, oh, but I believe it is. Why did Jesus? Ex why did Jesus tell him to go back to Jerusalem and tarry when he led him out as far as Bethany and he lifted his hands, brother, and he blessed them and then he ascended up on high. But before he did all those things, he told his disciples, he said, go back to Jerusalem and there tarry till you be and do with power from on high. I like Brother Don Rich, what he preached one time several years ago. He preached on the prescription prescriber. That's what we need to Tonight, we need to go back to that prescription prescriber. We need to get back in that upper room and say, God, fill me up. Give me a refilling. Amen. That I can go out into this wicked world and I can be a survivalist and I can be in survival mode and I can overcome every snare and every temptation and every pitfall that the devil puts in my path. I can be an overcomer. Yes. Right. Yes. Praise amen. God. Yes, amen. That's why Paul said to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Man, is that not what he said? Right, put on Jesus. Brother Staggs today, that's Brother Buford's daddy. He went to that church today and I went with him and he gave his testimony. How many ever heard his testimony? He gave his illustration like he always gives and you'll have to let him give it. I couldn't do any I couldn't do him any favors by me trying to give it. But I can tell you one thing, you know what brought such a great change in his life? It's when he put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And he made not provision for the flesh Come on. to fulfill the lust thereof. Right. When you're saved, you'll live in the spirit and you'll walk in the spirit. Right. Now we wonder why we got so many. And I, there ain't no such thing as a sinning Christian. But if that's all you've got is just a form of religion, you're headed for a fall, aren't you? Come on. Up in the north, up where I'm from, up in Ohio, Cincinnati, that is predominantly a Catholic area. Cincinnati, if you drive through the city of Cincinnati, brother, you can see all these big old Catholic cathedrals. And man, when they build them, they build them with great, uh, what's it called, architectural, I don't know the language, do you? I mean, man, they, they build them, they are beautiful, they are just laid out. Look like they poured and sunk a bunch of money into the building. Amen. Hallelujah. I drove by one of those churches one day, a Catholic church, and out on the sign it said, Interested in becoming a Catholic? You know what came to my mind? I said, what ought to be on the sign is interested in becoming a Christian. If a person wants to go to heaven, how many knows they got to be born again? It's Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If they ain't born again, they ain't no match for the devil. No. No. Every time they're tempted to do the wrong thing, they'll yield to it. Because they don't have no kind of power to overcome it. Go ahead. But if you're a child of God... If you're praying, if you're reading the Word of God, if you're studying to show yourself approved unto God, Amen. I said, you know what Jesus did when the devil came to him and said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Jesus said to the devil, It is written. It is written. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. How many's ever had a conversation with the devil? I've had a few Amen. myself. And you know what? You know what will cause the devil to go into retreat to go into retreat mode? Come on. It's when we quote this word to him. Yes, amen. Because right. even the devils, the very devils believe and tremble. Come on. At the name of Jesus. 
Amen. Praise God. And at His Word. Yes. The is. devil knows tonight that he's ineffective against the Word of God tonight. Oh, I want to tell you what. But if a person has got just a, a religious relationship, a religious experience, when the devil comes and jumps out at him and goes boo, they're going to run. Right. It's just religion. That's the truth. I'm going to tell you what tonight. I've always said this. The devil, he's a fisherman. Do you know that tonight? You say you like to fish. Well, the devil does too. He baits his hook up with all kinds of enticement. He baits his hook up with all kinds of, of temptations and things that the flesh likes to go after. Amen. Amen. The Bible said that the thief come hey, Jesus said it. Jesus said, The thief cometh not but for to kill and to steal and to destroy. Ain't that the way the devil works? He's just like an old thief. Anything he can take and pack off and go with it that don't belong to him, he's going to do it. Amen. Jesus said, The thief cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's why so many Christians today are becoming fallen prey to the enemy. That's why so many preachers are dirtying themselves. They're no longer preaching the gospel. Come on. Amen. They're selling out. They've sold out for a for a, for a, another woman. They've sold out, amen, for, for something, amen, in this world. Something, amen, that uh, Jesus said, what, what, what would a profit a man if he gained the whole world and lost his own soul? Or what would a man give in exchange for his soul? How many knows tonight that there's nothing that's more valuable than a person's soul. There's nothing more valuable to you than your soul. It ain't, it ain't how much money you got in the bank and account, even though it takes money to live on. But what's most important tonight is our walk with God tonight and our relationship with the Lord and knowing tonight that we're in survival mode. Amen. How many tonight can say, I've been praying, I'm praying without ceasing? Can you raise your hands and say, just like David said in Psalms 55 and verses 17, he said, evening, morning, and at noon will I pray and I'll cry aloud. And he'll hear my voice. Yes, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. God will hear you tonight and we'll ask. Amen. The Bible said we will receive. Thank you, sister, for getting up here when it came prayer request time. Thank you for saying, would you pray for the Liming family? that God would direct us. I want to tell yes. you what, the Bible said that the steps of a good man yes. are ordered by the Lord and He delighteth in His way. Well, son, God wants to order your steps. If we'll let God order our steps, I want to tell you what, that we won't go in the way of air tonight. No. We won't go in the wrong direction tonight. We're in survival mode. The Bible said that there's a way that seemeth right unto man, Brother Don, but the end thereof are the ways of death. But I want to tell you tonight, friends, God's ways are the right ways. I said God's way is the only way tonight. Amen. That will save us tonight from a whole heap of trouble in the very end if we'll listen to what God is saying. Amen. Praise God. Help me, Holy Hallelujah. Help me, Holy. How many wants to have a hearing ear tonight to hear what the Spirit yes. says under the church? Yes, glory to God. Let me I like to hear when God's speaking, don't you? Yes. Every time a man of God gets up, God uses the sister in the Lord. We need to just like it's God talking to us. Amen. Amen. If they're hearing from God, Amen. How many knows it'll connect with your spirit? Yes. That's why the Bible said, "Beloved." Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits to see whether they're of God or not. Amen. I want to tell you what, friend, we're living in a wicked time period tonight. We're living in an hour, brother. Amen. Me and Brother Staggs, we were sitting in his house early this morning, and we was talking about some of these... Uh, some of these highfalutin preachers that live lavish lifestyles. And we got the name of a few of them. I said, here, brother, take a look here on my phone. I showed him that it said some of, it showed some of the top 15 preachers in the United States of America. And you know how rich the, the how how wealthy the, the one that was on the number one list, it said he was worth $300 million. They were talking about Kenneth Copeland. I'm telling you what tonight, friend, I don't care how big name they get, brother, if they ain't preaching the word of God. 
if they ain't preaching sound doctrine, they ain't fit to listen to. I said if they if they've erred, brother, if they're promoting theirself and the agenda ain't about the Lord, yes. friend, amen. You better stay in survival mode. You better not listen to them. You better not send them one dime. That's the truth. Amen. People sending them all kinds of money. Praise the Lord. And I don't know how I got off on that, but I'm talking tonight about being in survival mode. Come on. How many knows this world is full of deception? Yes. Apostle Paul said, talked about how that in the how that in the end time that there would be deceivers. Deceiving and deceiving their own selves. He even said the Spirit is speaking of expressing in the latter times how that some. Now he didn't he didn't declare that everybody would. He said, but some shall depart from the faith. Is that going to be you next? Is that going to be me? It will if we don't stay in survival. It will. Or you know, you'll quit church. Your job will become your distraction. Your friend, your neighbor will become a distraction. Amen. If you let that get between you and God, it will pull you away from God. That's why the Bible said that we're to, we must lay aside every weight in the sin that so easily besets us. Somebody said, about, what about my good paying job? Listen, friend, if it's keeping you out of church all the time, you better pray about it. You better pray God will put you on a shift to where you can be in church, to where you can be faithful to God. I want to tell you what, friend, it's important that we come to God's house. I said yes. it's important that we meet yes. together. Somebody said, what about these house? I mean, what about, you know, having church in your home? Well, that's okay, but I'll tell you what, friend, over time as the churches flourish, God saw fit for believers to come out together and for there to be a pastor and for there to be teachers and for there to be workers that we can Encourage one another. Hey, I'm not telling you tonight, friend. It is important tonight. But if we're not in survival mode, it'll be that much more easier to draw back. Amen. And I want to tell you tonight, friend, now is not the time to be looking back under perdition. No. But if anything, now is the time to be looking unto Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The author and the finisher of mine and yours, faith. Yes. Oh. How many is looking for a city? Yes, amen. I'm not looking to see San Francisco as much as I'm looking for that city oh. which has 12 foundations. Brother Don, who's builder, maker's God. That's a city that I long to see. Come on. But so many people today are getting their eyes up on this world. And it's fixing to pass away. Oh, I'm talking tonight about being in survival mode. If you get your eyes up on this world, this world will let you down. This world tonight will cause you to fall by the wayside. It will leave you there by the wayside to die. But what that good Samaritan do when he saw that one laying by the roadside half dead and wounded? Oh, glory to God! What did he do? He, he poured some oil into his wound, picked him up, took him to the end. Amen. He didn't even lay it to their charge. He said, anything beyond this? He said, I'll repay you when I come again. Amen. You know why we preach the method that we preach as preachers? We preach the Scripture, amen, and we're not here to try to step on your toes. But how many knows if we need our toes stepped on, if it'll help us, if it'll bring enhancement to our walk with God, if it'll help us to do the right thing, if it'll help us to make better choices, if it'll cause us to move up closer to God. Then let him just step on my toes. Come on, amen. If it'll help us to stay in survival. Come on, amen. It'll, if it'll cause us to get back on the right track and start listening to the right music and only hearing that which is edifying to hear. Yes. On, Glory to God. Help us. And just you. preach it, preacher. Yes. Come on. Amen. Preach it, brother. Obey the Lord. Hallelujah. My, my mom, my mom, when my mom would spank me, now, I want to hear how some of you all got spanked, but my mom used to beat me with her hand. I never did get whipped with a belt, but I, you know, I got that big old hand up on my shoulder. You ever get whipped that way? How many's ever been whipped with a hand before? Well, been a long time. Been a long time? Sure. Teacher in school it used to beat me with a ping pong paddle. <laughs> Had tape all around it, I guess to keep it from breaking. But when my mom corrected me, you know, Brother Don, 
<laughs> she didn't need a belt. All she needed was that right hand. No wonder my shoulder feels half broke to this day. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. It kept me and my brother on the right track. Amen. If, if, if my parents told me, he said, be in by a certain time, I came in by a certain time. If I thought I was going to be late, I'd hurry up. I'd get to a pay phone. I'd call and say, hey, I'm going to be a little bit late. Can you extend this a little bit? Thank God for that grace period that they gave me. Come on. Ain't that like the Lord? Yeah. The Lord is long-suffering. And it's not His will that any of us should perish, but that all should come under repentance. Come on. Hallelujah. God's a merciful God yes, tonight. He, is. he wants you to be in survival mode tonight, friend. Amen. But start tonight. If you feel like you're, on, you're in sinking water tonight, Amen. I heard just a halt tonight. Let's not wait till the next scheduled revival. Let's not wait till the next youth service. But let's get it right tonight. How many can agree to that? Yes. Say amen. 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 Let's let's get help from God tonight. Amen. Let's be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, putting on that whole armor of God. Let's look at the. Let's just look at the devil tonight. And think of those lions out there in the safari. They call them what? The king of the jungle. Because of their great big roar that they have. They don't just have a roar. they got a big bite too. Amen. Claws. And that's how the Bible compares the devils. Being like a roaring lion. That walk at the bow. Like you said, they're, they're a big boss out there. Amen. The devil tonight, he's a big old bully tonight. Amen. But friend, he can't you he can't back you in the corner. Come on. Amen. You know what David said? You he told Goliath, he said, You might come to me with spear and the sword, but I'm gonna come to you in the name of the Lord. That's how we need to go with the devil tonight. In the name of the Lord. Amen. We can't do it in any other name. Amen. We can put our trust in man all we want to. But I want to tell you what, eventually man will let you down. Benny Hill, Benny Hens let a lot of people down. So I said, why are you naming them? Because I believe they're wolves in sheep's clothing tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to mark them that are among us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah tonight. I'm telling you what. Anything that you face tonight, you better face it and say, I come to you in the name of the Lord. Yes, glory to God. Help us, Holy Ghost. If we want a revival around here tonight, saints, amen. We're going to have to pray for it. We can call for all the big name preachers. We can go down the alphabetical list. Amen. And I know there's some good preachers out there. God's given us some good preachers. Amen. But if, how many of us, if they're not praying for revival, if they're not praying about the revival, I want to tell you tonight, saints, it'll just be a series of meetings. It'll just be scheduled nights. Amen. And nothing will come out of it. That's like these preachers get called to preach and they run up here to these Bible colleges. Amen. Hallelujah! Don't fall out and be there tonight. What John say? Listen to what John said. I'm going to read it while, while I'm on it. I'm just going to read it tonight. Listen to what John said. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me find it here. Amen. Tonight. Amen. Hallelujah tonight. I'll, I'll come to it here in just a moment. I'm going to read it tonight. But I'm telling you what tonight, friend. Amen. We can run to all these Bible colleges and get our, all of our degrees and our certificates. Amen. But if we're not called from God tonight, if we're not prayed up, amen, when we come to preach, our preaching will be no more than sound and brass come on. and tingling sound. We can sing the perfection. We can put on all of our attire come on, that the, all these choirs will come out wearing. But if they ain't anointed, when they get up to sing, how many knows it will be ineffective? Amen. I like good encouraging singing, don't you? Yes. I like good encouraging preaching. Amen. Hallelujah tonight. Hallelujah. That's why tonight we've got to be anointed from God tonight. Jude 27. Hallelujah. John said, But the anointing which ye have received of Him which abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. Hallelujah. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things in His truth, and no lie, even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide 
in Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God for it. Amen. I'm talking tonight about being in survival mode. How many is in survival mode tonight? Amen. If you are tonight, would you come up here tonight? Yes, Jesus. If you're a survivalist, come up here tonight. Friend, let's get in that yes, liberty. Jesus. You are you're in a liver die predicament tonight. Amen. If you want to live, you better come up here. If you want to have life tonight, and life more abundantly, come up here. Just talk to God tonight. Pour out your heart to God. Say, God, strengthen me. Say, God, strengthen me. I'm weak tonight. My faith is weak. I'm losing confidence tonight, God. Help me, God. I want to keep my faith in, in you steadfast. I want to be a new boy, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Come on tonight, saints. Say, God, survival mode is what it's going to take. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're not a survivalist, eventually there's going to be failure. Hallelujah. Tonight.
see what happens. How many would be willing to come tomorrow night if you could? You can. Hallelujah. You can. All right, everybody can. Hallelujah. See God tomorrow. Say we want you to move tomorrow night. Now I want to give you an opportunity to give an um, offering to the evangelist tonight. Brother Lyman, if you will. I'm just teasing about that. I mean, when you feel the quickening power of the Lord in God's house, and you know that He's wanting to do something, hallelujah, we don't want to stop it. Anybody else? Okay, hallelujah, that's what we do. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. seeking the Holy Ghost, come tomorrow night. Seek Him tomorrow as you go through your work day or whatever you're doing. Just talk, talk it over with Him. Say, this is what I want. I want you to fill me with the Holy Ghost tomorrow. Tonight. It'll be tonight for your tomorrow. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You know, the Spirit is like a wind. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going. But here it comes. Moving on you. God move on you. Sister Annie, did God move on you tonight? Hallelujah. Lip for you, did God move on you tonight? Yep. What about you, brother? Who's saying God move on you tonight? Let's go with him. Brother Lyman, would you come back tomorrow night? It won't be at 6.30, it'll be at 7.30. How's that? Okay. Okay. Everybody? Okay. Come on, children. Oh yeah, all of y'all come back at 7.32. <laughs> Church on Monday night, that'll be different, won't it? Hallelujah. Praise God. Brother Lyme, we do have an offering for you. I know you didn't do it for an offering, but I know you did. Okay, I know that you need it. Now you're traveling. That's what the Bible talks about, a man that's traveling. <laughs> it costs money to travel. Hallelujah. We're going to have offering. Father, we praise you and we thank you for tonight. We thank you for survival mode. Help us all to be in survival mode. Help us, Lord, to go through whatever you want us to go through, but help us to go through victoriously, through the Word, through Jesus and His grace. God, we thank you for tonight and we ask you to bless us as we go through tomorrow. Bring us into revival. Yes, Lord, that the people that want the Holy Ghost, both in the Many, even in, in the Facebook and all the other videos, live videos and otherwise, let them, Lord God, be drawn to the Holy Ghost, drawn to the anointing of God and all these that are in the house of God that's need the Holy Ghost. God, we pray for your help in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay, Laura. Love each other. Love each other. Okay. I guess Nehemiah's asleep. Okay. God bless y'all. See you tomorrow night, Lord willing, 7.30.